This tutorial is for Uniswap developers who can't afford the crazy gas price on test nets right now. Look at this. Look what it's done in the last few days. This includes myself. I don't have the test ether to write tutorials on testnet anymore if the gas price is going to be like this. While this is kind of a silly situation because it is fake money on the testnet after all. Thankfully, there's a workaround, and I'll show you how to do it in this video. While we can't use Gorly anymore, we can fork mainnet and do Uniswap swaps on that. In a way, this is even better than a testnet because token addresses are the same as on mainnet. Just don't accidentally use your real wallet and lose all your money. So pay attention. I'm Blockman, and I get developers up to speed on Uniswap. If you want to learn Uniswap v3 while building a functional Uniswap interface, check out my Uniswap course in the description. I have a hard hat project set up here with some libraries installed. Note I'm using Ether 6, so the syntax is a little different than Ether 5, but not by too much. And there's only a little bit of setup to get this working. I have my hardhat.config.js file right here, and it's not much different than normal. The only difference is I've added a networks object with a nested hardhat object with a nested forking object with a URL key and value inside. And this is my Infura mainnet URL. Now I've changed the key because I need to keep that private, so you'll have to use your own. And in addition to this, I've added another network to my MetaMask. I've named this mainnet fork, but you could name it whatever you like, just something so that you won't confuse it with mainnet. I've added the RPC URL, which you get when you start your hardhat node locally. Make sure this is not the URL for mainnet. I'm using a chain ID of 1 and a currency symbol of ETH. So the values in here are kind of a hybrid of both mainnet and your local hardhat network. But again, be really careful that you're not thinking you're using a fork of mainnet and actually be using mainnet because that's not going to be good if you accidentally spend your real tokens. So I'm going to start the hardhat node locally with npx hardhat node dash dash network hard hat and this is the URL for the fork network that I added to MetaMask and then I have a file here with some code in it where we're going to do a swap on Uniswap now I'm going to use Uniswap v2 but this should work whether this is Uniswap v3 or any other protocol I'll give you this code but let's walk through it together to make sure that we both understand it so we start by importing ethers and then we need a few artifacts. We grab the router artifact from the v2 periphery library. We import the ERC20 ABI, which I have locally. I've called this ERC20.json. We import the wrapped ether artifact, which I have as this file over here. These are the addresses on mainnet for wrapped ether, for USDT, for the Uniswap v2 router, and for a pair on Uniswap v2, which is the equivalent of a pool on Uniswap v3. We initialize the provider. We initialize a wallet. And this is not my secret key that you see here. And you should absolutely not use your wallet secret key. This is the secret key from one of the generated wallets from Hardhat. So that's this right here. One of the seeded addresses that's created when we start our local Hardhat node. Then we connect the wallet to the signer. And then we initialize the router USDT and wrapped ether. We have a quick function here that checks for wallet balances for our signer. So we get the balance for Ether, we get the balance for USDT and the balance for wrapped Ether, and then we print those values. And note that USDT only has six decimal places where ETH and wrapped Ether have 18. 
then I want to swap wrapped ether for USDT. So the first thing I'm going to do is wrap some ETH and we can do this by sending ether to the wrapped ether contract and it will just come back as being wrapped. So here we're swapping five ETH for five wrapped ether. Then I'll log the balances. Then I'm gonna create a variable to store the amount we want to swap and I'll just swap one wrapped ether. Then because wrapped ether is an ERC20, we need to approve before we can pass it into the swap. So I'm going to approve uh, the same amount, one ether that I want to swap. And the approve function is on the wrapped ether contract. We wait for that to complete. And now we'll do the swap. I've explained uh, V2 swaps in some other videos, so I won't do it here, but we're swapping one wrapped ether for USDT. Wrapped ether address, USDT address, the amount of wrapped ether we're passing in. We'll wait for that to complete. And then we'll log our balances. And we just need to run this file to get this to work. So let's give this a try in our terminal. In a new window, I'll paste it in. You can see the ETH balance of almost 10,000. So this is the generated wallet with fake Ether in it because, I mean, if I had 10,000 ETH, I'd probably be retired by now. We have five wrapped Ether because we swapped five ETH for them. And we have zero USDT before the swap. And then after the swap, we have four wrapped Ether and one USDT. So we know that this worked. Let me know in the comments what else you'd like to learn. Give this video a like and subscribe if you found it helpful. And I'll see you next time.